think we're running. We're running. All right. Um, shot a video last week, and when I went back to upload it, uh, some crazy, like, popping noise. Um, so didn't get a video last this week, so I apologize for that. But we did work quite a bit um, on the on the one spar. I uh, continued with the cleanup. I got the right file. The right file is here. I can't remember the name of this file, but um, buddy of mine saw the video, reached out and said, hey, dude, I got one in the shop. Go ahead and grab it. So grabbed it from him. Um, it really does the job. Thumbs absolutely raw from uh, working this thing. So I ended up, um, after the second night, I grabbed a pair of gloves from the house, and that helped out immensely. So um, it's hard. The, the way this thing's tapered down, um, really with the handle on it, it's okay on the end. But when you get about halfway, you can't use the handle anymore. So in order to work it both ways, um, you just you got to go with it on, on a flat, you know, with, the, with your bare hands. So I was laying in bed after doing this for a couple of nights. I thought, man, how nice would it be to pick this thing up and run it through my Deaver tool on my benchtop grinder? It would be awesome, you know, I, a little bit of cleanup and then run it through. So um, I'm laying in bed, and you know, I happen to have a Milwaukee. Right angle grinder and I had to have a couple of those spare 3m wheels and uh, backed it up with a cutting blade so uh, it doesn't flex it, I don't think it would have flex it's pretty this stuff is pretty hard but I was worried about it spinning at a different rpm maybe too fast and coming apart on me so obviously I wear glasses um, but not in here I'm uh, if I'm nearsighted no I'm farsighted no, I'm nearsighted. I'm nearsighted. I can see stuff up close. So don't need those unless I'm driving. So threw this thing on after I got the majority of it knocked down. So um, this thing was super rough cut, you know, down to, I think, I swear they used a freaking skill saw with a bad blade on it um, to cut these. So I did work down the majority of it and got down to a pretty decent smooth surface and then got this bad boy out and just... Be careful if you do this. This is not the um, preferred method, but it really did give me a nice clean surface that, that I'm pretty happy with and uh, completely deburred. So I believe it'll be safe and give us uh, many, 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 many years of safe flight and operation. So don't want any um, cracks to come up down the road in the, in the mangling spark. So, uh, uh, anyway, so if you guys are doing this stuff and you can't get your bench angle, angle top on there, go ahead and throw this, throw it in there. It's freaking rock. So, uh, picked up a couple tools. I needed uh, some, I didn't pick up a tool that I had them. I just needed some more sanding just for the inside of these holes. Laid the entire thing out for the plants. Um, got the, they, in the plans that ask you in the spar, there's three holes in the spar to attach to the, to, I'm sorry, to the, from three holes in the rib to attach to the spar. The plans have you drill the center hole. So I'm assuming down the road, I'll Clico that on and use that as my template to draw to drill the other two holes and then deburr, upsize, deburr, and then um, final rivet together. So laid all those out, got that all taken care of. Those are all drilled and then laid out all the lightning holes. Those are all laid out. I actually drilled two of them just to kind of see how it would go. I picked up a, I picked up a, a fresh... Um, three and a half inch hole saw, which you know, I wish I could have found just a metal, um, but this is a bimetal and it's super aggressive. So I am, I used a cordless, my Bosch cordless. Um, I think, I think I'm going to grab my plug-in drill at home and, and try to go with the lower RPM. And I'm also going to take it off the bench. I'm going to shim it up on some four buys or some six buys that I've got and just try to use my my body weight to push down a little bit more evenly. This bench is awesome. Um, I don't like to bend over, um, but drilling down on this and keeping everything right, I think I'll have, you know, I'm just gonna use leverage and my uh, my, my big ass to, to drill those holes. So um, I think we'll do that, do that tomorrow, get all these holes. I also laid out the end cut, it's at an angle, you know, just basically per the plans, 152 inches with a quarter inch offset from the top. So that's all laid out, ready to go. I will cut that tomorrow. I'm gonna cut it by hand. Um, I was gonna use my porta van, but the more I think about it, I think I'll just do it by hand. It's only, it's it's not gonna be that bad. I've got a fresh, couple fresh blades. We'll soap them up and we'll take, we'll go after it. 
and I, I don't think it'll be that bad. Worst case scenario, let's just say it takes me 20 minutes to cut it. Done, we'll clean it up. I've got the greatest deburr tool now, so um, we'll clean that up and have it ready. Uh, long term, uh, let's see, next next process. Uh, I'm gonna finish this rib, this, this spar up 100%. I'm gonna weigh it, and then I'm gonna weigh the other spar to see if I actually get the, it'll be half of the 5.3 pounds claimed lightning. Um, out of this, so I'll just do that as a comparison so I have it in my head. Um, do you want to be conscious of the weight on this thing um, with only a 30 horsepower motor? And again, I haven't even confirmed that. I'm just going to assume I could have one of the larger 40 horse motors that were offered. Um, I don't have the belt reduction version, but I am looking for one um, that, that claimed 50 horsepower. Um, but again, you know, the weight, I have the smaller fuel tank. So I have the original fuel tank, the four gallon wing tank. The intent or the purpose of this airplane at this point is just to uh, to climb and glide and stay local and, and, and just enjoy it for what it is. And um, if we can get everything dialed in and and happy and, and it's flying well, then maybe, you know, maybe one day we'll reach and do a couple cross countries. But uh, uh, I don't know how many of you guys are watching the web. Um, I can't remember the guy's name. Um, yeah, I wish I could. He does the accident investigations uh, for airplanes, and for whatever reason, they've been falling out of the sky like crazy lately. Uh, it's not Blanco Lirio, but it's another guy. Um, damn, I wish I remember his name. But uh, one of these airplanes just uh, dropped out of the sky and killed a guy. Um, weird deal. Um, airplane uh, deregistered in 17, sold, and, uh, you know, based on the comments on the internet, it sounds like it was maybe maybe a uh, weight and balance issue. Um, the more I think about it, I don't know. The elevator trim on these things is weird, but I don't know. So um, sad for his family, sad for the original builder. You know, guy put his heart and soul in building that airplane, and uh, um, the gentleman that was flying the airplane was not even a certificated pilot. Uh, so that's that. Man, that's got to suck. You know, what would have taken? You know, 10, 12 grand, you know, get some seat time, El Solo. Um, but just to go out and do that, you know, I guess maybe the thought process was, you know, he's flying a, you know, a glider, you know, motor glider, and how safe could that be? Well, shit, leaves the ground, man, kill you. It's not like a car, you can't put the blinker on, pull over. Stuff goes wrong, it goes wrong quick, you die. So, anyways, that was, that kind of jacked me up for a little bit. You know, I'm building one of these airplanes and I'm really excited about it. And, you know, all of a sudden a clip and a clip of, you know, it's a church parking lot. <laughs> I'm thinking, damn, that's, that's at the very least, that's a Sonics. And the more, the closer I looked at it and even the poor photo, I'm like, damn, I, I'm building that airplane. So, uh, I jacked with my head a little bit, but anyways, you know what? It wasn't the airplane's fault. It was the, it was the person behind the controls. So I'll, uh, got a problem out there. You know, it's Friday night and not even eight o'clock and, Come on, guys, you gotta wait till at least 10 o'clock before you get pulled over. I'm not even drunk yet. Oh, we got modified exhaust. We're going for it. Maybe we'll go racing later. Anyways, that's where I'm at. I'm off track, way off track. Um, rough week at work, so I didn't get out here as much as I wanted to. Did not feel good one day. Um, so, but I'm feeling excellent now, and we are gonna rock and roll on this thing. I definitely, I, the goal is to have these spars done by the end of the month, and I think with the tools that I have, and uh, the time that I have, I think that's attainable. Um, finish the spars by the end of the month, you know, October 1, I think realistically we could have the wings done by January 1, uh, unless the aileron surfaces, the ailerons, we'll talk about the ailerons down the, ailerons down the road. I've kind of mentioned already they, the skins were damaged. So um, thought process, I've got two thought processes right now. A, three, let's go three. I find them used on the net, that are in good shape. I find a machine shop to bend them for me, or we might pay them and do them out of carbon. Um, I can do all three. So, but again, I don't need to worry about that. Not even this year, right now. I think we'll just focus on getting the wings built. And then uh, once the wings are built, I'll deal with the aileron surfaces. And then from there, we'll dive right into the fuselage. Um, so, you know, which isn't bad. I am going to reach out to the DAR, uh, have him look at the tail surfaces. And if I can get the green light on those, I'm going to go ahead and finish those up, close them in. I do need to run the uh, pedal line and the one surface, which is not a big deal. It'll take an hour to do that. So I'm going to reach out to the DAR, get that blessing, and um, 
like them to look at the spars too, um, just to make sure that what I'm seeing is what I'm seeing and that, that you know, I'm not putting anyone or myself in undue harm because I'm a bit a little paranoid after that incident. So I guess uh, that's kind of, I guess it's the right thing to do. So the more I think about it, you know, what's a phone call, you know, what's a, what's a visit and uh, we'll move forward from there. Uh, all right. I think that's uh, that's enough for tonight. I'm going to head on home. Actually, I'm not going to head home. I'm going to listen to my new speaker. I haven't shown, I don't think I've shown you guys this thing. Hold on, let me show it to you. It's freaking awesome. Come out. Come out. Come out. Okay, you're out. Okay, you're out. Look at that. It's, I can't even tell you. Oh, it's fantastic. And, and let's see. It's got pretty bites. <laughs> oh, I'm so happy. So that'll be fantastic. It'll be good times. Um, definitely enjoy my music. So can't use it on YouTube, but whatever. <laughs> See you guys.